prune. Every time you prune, it encourages plant growth. So uh, you can't keep a plant small that wants to get big. Next. So there are various reasons why we prune. Keep in mind that pruning is purely a human development. Plants have evolved without pruning. Plants live and die without pruning. Humans like to prune for different reasons. And uh, a couple of those reasons might be to form it into a desired shape such as a hedge or something. Uh, some people may want to prune a plant to rejuvenate it, to take out old stuff and get new stuff to come in. Uh, it can also be used to increase flowering and fruiting, uh, particularly on the fruit trees. And we'll talk about that further down into the presentation. And then you can thin a tree out once again to help with the ripening of uh, fruits. Next. Uh, there's also pruning that is done for aesthetic purposes and pruning that is done for health purposes of the trees. For instance, eliminating crossing branches and branches that rub against each other will prevent further damage down the road. It also allows you to develop a nice framework on a young tree, uh, say a fruit tree. Developing good branch work on a young fruit tree uh, will allow it to grow off of those branches for the rest of its life. It's also when a plant is young, it's a good time to eliminate any branches that are growing in the wrong direction. Or if, there's, if the tree is too thick in the middle, we can thin it a little bit and this will reduce what we call the, the wind sail or the wind blowing on the tree will be allowed to move through the tree. Next. So on a young tree, by pruning it to encourage uh, branch work, it'll actually help to build up the diameter of the tree, and that's important for the overall stability. Yeah. And once again, pruning is not a substitute for poor plant selection. If you want to plant to grow short and stubby, you don't buy a tall plant like a pine tree and try to keep it short and stubby. Okay. Uh, another good reason for pruning would be to remove injured, diseased, or insect infested wood. And when you, when a tree trimmer cleans your tree, this is what he'd be doing. He'd be removing broken branches, diseased branches, etc. If your plant does have a disease like, let's say, fire blight, then your tools should be sterilized between each cut to make sure that you don't spread the disease. Uh, next. Now, these are some specialty training forms, bonsai. Uh, Bonsai is the art of torturing a plant into a particular size, making it smaller than it would want to be. Topiary, uh, that's, once again, forcing a plant into an unnatural shape. Hedging, that can be done successfully with certain plants, not with all plants, but with certain ones. And espaling is when you take a tree or a shrub and form it into a vine-like form, typically against a wall or a trellis. Next. Okay, so a couple of things to know before you begin to prune is how a plant grows. And apical diamond dominance means the plants always grow from the tips. In other words, a strong plant with a strong central leader will continue to grow that way. Lateral branches will grow that way. And the terminal buds, the buds at the very end, they control that. So some plants like 
pine trees and liquid ambers have a very strong apical dominance and they grow straight up. Some plants have weaker apical dominance, meaning that all of the buds, the laterals and the upright ones are about equal. And that gives you a, a broad dome or a rounded head, like an oak or a pistachio. So sometimes removing that terminal bud uh, causes all kinds of havoc within the tree. That's why uh, topping is uh, never recommended. Next. So pruning on current season's wood, that means pruning on the stuff that was developed right now, will help to reduce the growth of a plant. Might help to increase flowering on some plants, like roses. Roses, when we put in this winter, we're actually pruning out most of the growth that grew during this year. Uh, same with uh, lantana and hibiscus. But there are some plants that we absolutely cannot do that with. Uh, camellia would be a good example of that uh, because the camellia takes a long time to develop the shoots that are going to produce the buds for the coming year. So on a plant like a camellia and uh, lilac, they should be pruned immediately after they flower to give them a full year to develop the wood for the next set of uh, flowers. Next. Some plants produce flowering in the same location for many years, a holly or a redbud. So you have to be very careful not to prune them. And if you do prune them, only very lightly. If you prune out a spur where they produce flowers, that's it. You won't get any more flowers or fruiting in that location. Next. So once again, pruning is not a substitute for improper plant growth. If you have a tree or shrub that's directly underneath the overhang of your house. And it grows so vigorously that you have to prune that thing every year to keep it from hitting the house or the roof, then that probably wasn't the correct plant to put there. So removal of that plant and planting another one, uh, a species that would be uh, more compatible with that location uh, would be the right answer. And remember, Pruning always encourages growth. So uh, if you notice that you're pruning this particular plant and next year you have to prune it again, that's because pruning does stimulate growth. Next. Now, with most trees and most plants, uh, pruning takes place before springtime, before the growth begins. So here in Southern California, uh, that's usually done right about now, January. We have a pretty short season here. Uh, a lot of people say that the real season for pruning is between December 21st and February 21st. So that's only two months. So most of you are pruning fruit trees, deciduous trees, roses, should all be done during this time. Some plants, plants that are sensitive to frost, like lantana and hibiscus, they should not be pruned at this time. Because if they are damaged by frost, that damaged area will help to insulate against any further damage. So those types of plants would actually be pruned after the last chance of frost is gone, probably late March. Next. Now, we're going to talk about the four basic pruning methods. And uh, these are things that you can practice in your garden. Uh, some of the plants you can practice these on are things like azaleas and camellias and uh, roses. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is pinching. That's where you simply want to make your plant thicker. And uh, 
This can be done with azaleas and camellias. And when you pinch, you're taking out these lateral buds and it encourages the plant to produce more growth at that location, making the plant bushier. Next. Now heading back, that's where you take off uh, an entire stem instead of just a bud. Uh, this is done on plants like the cotoneasters, hollies, and plum trees that we'll talk about a little later. And as you can see, they're leaving plenty of the twigs on there so that it can continue to produce flowers or fruiting um, by just removing selective twigs or branches. It's a good way to rejuvenate old plants too. Don't take everything off. Next. Then thinning. Thinning is done uh, with trees. A little earlier, we talked about the wind sail factor. Thinning a tree takes out entire limbs or branches and allows the wind to pass through a tree. So in a very windy area, if you're concerned about a tree uh, perhaps blowing down, uh, thinning would be a way to allow the wind to pass through it. Next. And then shearing, and this is done on hedges and topiaries, and uh, it can be done with certain plants. And maybe you have some of these hedges in your yard, and maybe your gardener comes along every week and prunes them to keep them looking exactly the same. Now, by doing that, of course, you'll never get any flowering on those plants because yearly shearing like that uh, removes any possibility of flowering. Next. Okay, now we're going to talk about the actual physical pruning, uh, making pruning cuts. And uh, typically, we'll talk about a fruit tree here. Uh, anything less than an inch and a quarter in diameter could probably be cut with hand tools. A uh, lopper uh, would work just fine. And this is these would be small limbs, and on your fruit tree, uh, these are the types of branches you'll probably be cutting. Now, you'll see here that it says to cut approximately at a 45 degree angle. And 45 degree angle means when you're perpendicular to the earth, 45 degrees, not 45 degrees off the direction the plant comes out. So I hope that's uh, uh, not too complicated. Next. Okay, now with larger branches, branches that are too big to be cut with hand loppers, uh, you may want to use a, a, a saw and uh, it would require three or maybe even four cuts to take a branch out. Uh, we're going to show you on the next slide exactly how to do those cuts. Next. So your first cut is what we call an undercut. And you make that cut first so that as you remove the branch, it doesn't tear the bark. Your second cut is further out and the second cut can be as far out as you'd like to help to remove weight. And then your third cut will be the one that finally takes the stub off uh, right at the parent branch. So. Uh, with a large limb, three or four cuts would be necessary to take the branch off, always starting with the undercut. Next. So we talked briefly about the development of the flowers or fruits on certain plants and we mentioned that roses uh, will produce on this year's growth, but something like a plum or a cherry produces on older growth. So you need to know what type of plant you're dealing with and when and how the fruit is developed. Now for roses and fruit trees, the time of year to be pruning is right now. And that is true for all deciduous fruit trees, uh, not necessarily for citrus. Uh, citrus can be 
pruned during the growing season. They can be pruned in the fall, if you'd like, uh, but not so much in the winter. Next. So roses, and there's many different types of roses, but they all develop on this year's wood. And that's why during January, when we prune our roses, we prune them back pretty well. I think the video at the end of this clip will show you how we pruned some of the roses up at the uh, water district. Next. Okay. So when you're done pruning, your plant should have canes that are extended out away from the center of the plant. If you held your palm flat and lifted your fingers up, that's approximately how the main canes on your rows should look when you're finished pruning. The amount to prune, generally the plant tells you because you're typically pruning right above the bud that is facing out away from the center of the plant. And you should look at those buds on most roses anywhere between 12 and 24 inches. You should be able to find the correct place to prune. Next. So here's a picture of a recently pruned young rose plant. And you see that it's opened in the center for good wind circulation, and all of the canes are facing out in different directions. And this is excellent. Now, after you prune, you can apply superphosphate, which, which is just a phosphorus blend. You can also spray them with um, a dormant oil or a copper spray. I don't think lime sulfur uh, is still available but you can mix copper and horticultural grade oil and spray your plants. And this uh, will remove any overwintering insect eggs and any fungal diseases that are remaining on the stems of your plants. Uh, no feeding though, no fertilizer, no fertilizer until probably late March. Uh, we don't want to stimulate growth while the plant is sleeping. Next. So this is, this shows you where to prune. That black line shows you that you're cutting right above that leaf. Because underneath every leaf is a little bud, a dormant bud. And when we cut right above that leaf, that bud will come out. And the way these roses grow is the leaves closest to the flower typically have three leaflets. Uh, the next set down has five, and the next set down has five, and eventually they may get to seven closer to the cane. The best place to prune is directly above the second outside set of five leaves. And that will give you a nice stem that will develop from that point. Next. So typically, after we prune, about a month and a half later, we should have some growth uh, beginning. And that growth is where our blooms will be. So approximately 45 days after pruning. So let's say if we're pruning in the middle of March, uh, that would get us to about the big, I'm sorry, if we're pruning in the middle of January, that would get us to about March. You should have some good growth beginning in March, and uh, you'll be able to see where the flowers are going to be produced. You can also prune your plant during the growing season to remove the flowers and use the same exact technique. Next. Now we'll talk about some fruit trees. Uh, we'll start on peaches because those are very popular. Lots of people have uh, peaches. 
And uh, the peaches are pruned right now. Uh, you want to remove at least one third of all of the shoots towards the center of your tree. Uh, so by removing one third of the shoots, that'll still leave you uh, plenty of uh, shoots to produce fruit on. But if you don't remove enough of these shoots or twigs or small branches, uh, you may get broken branches uh, this coming year from the weight of the fruit. Now, some people like to head back the branches that they're going to leave by about one third. This helps to keep the size of your plant pretty small uh, because it will grow vigorously again uh, come springtime. So with a peach, even if you're cutting it back uh, one third, it will still grow back to its original size and beyond uh, next year. And once again, just like with our roses, we can spray with dormant sprays at this time of year and also use the uh, superphosphate. Next. Now here's a great picture of uh, pruning of a very young peach tree. And in some cases, this is uh, all you may need to do with a young tree. The heading back is uh, something that you can do the first year, but of even more importance is removing certain branches so that you end up with four major branches. Now, in a perfect world, you would have a branch going north, south, east, and west. Uh, but that uh, always doesn't happen. But just keep in mind, all you need are four major branches on your peach tree and then lateral branches growing off of that. Next. Plums are a little different. Plums cannot be pruned as severely uh, because they produce on spurs, meaning they produce their fruit in the same year, in the same place year after year. You can remove old branches or what we call shoots or wind sprouts, water sprouts, anything that jumps up right through the middle of your plant. So if you have a branch growing off of a main trunk or main branch, and that thing is growing four feet up in the air straight up, uh, those are called water sprouts. And those can be removed all the way back uh, to the uh, parent branch. Other than that, you can thin them back at the ends and prune out anything growing towards the center of the tree or any small twigs that are growing off of the uh, lateral branches. Once again, spray them after you prune them with the dormant sprays and you can use the uh, superphosphate, which is not a food, by the way, but helps to encourage flowering and fruiting the uh, coming year. Next. So there's a picture of your plum, and you can see how they've tried to open it up and uh, thin it out. Okay. Now all of the water sprouts have been removed, so you don't see any branches shooting straight up through the middle uh, on this slide. Next. A nectarine is pruned exactly like a peach. In fact, there is only the only difference between a peach and a nectarine is the fuzz. Uh, there's two enzymes that are actually different, and one produces the uh, fuzz on the outside of the uh, peach, uh, and the other one uh, has to do with uh, uh, the stems. But other than that, your pruning is the same. Next. Now, a flowering peach is a little different. Uh, a flowering peach, you don't want to prune too much right now. You can prune it after, just after it's finished blooming. And uh, that's really the best time because if we prune during the winter, we might remove some wood that would be uh, used for flowering this coming year. Uh, when you do prune it, you can prune it back pretty hard. And uh, 
So this is the exception. A flowering peach we prune just a little bit differently than the fruiting peach. Okay, next. Citrus. Well, they produce fruit uh, on the current season's wood. They begin to flower sometimes as early as February and often through March and April. And then the fruit is typically produced later in the season. Uh, for instance, a uh, navel orange ripens in December and January. So you prune them typically in the fall. Some people will prune them while they're flowering or right after they're flowering so they can see where the fruit will be produced. Uh, quite often, particularly on lemons and grapefruits to a certain extent, uh, you want to know where they're going to fruit so you can actually cut some of that wood off uh, so that they don't produce so much that they might uh, break the branches. But we never prune too severely on a citrus because we don't want sun burning. Keep in mind that citrus in nature are shrubs. They are bushes and their foliage goes all the way to the ground. And that foliage protects the trunk of the tree from sun burning. Next. Now, an apple, once again, you can prune the apple now. Uh, if you want to get your tree to grow wider instead of taller, cut out the main center branch, the main trunk. Cut it out to where these strong branches growing out sideways. You only have to do this one time, um, and it will take the center leader out, and it will encourage growth to the sides, uh, which makes it easier to, to pick your fruit tree, uh, to pick the apples, and also keeps the apple from getting too large. So once again, they can be sprayed with the uh, dormant sprays after pruning. Next. Pear, we don't grow pears out here too much because it's not quite cold enough, but they can be treated uh, a lot like the apple. Pears have strong apical dominance. They do just want to grow straight up. Uh, so once again, cutting back those branches that grow straight up will help. It'll help to spread your plant out and uh, once again pruned at this time of year and you can spray it after you finish pruning. There are, I should mention there are a couple of varieties of pears that are considered low chill. I know there's a pear called Monterey and there's one called Florida Home and one of them comes from Mexico and one of them comes from Florida. So they'll produce fruit even here in this mild climate. Next. Uh, persimmons. Okay, persimmons grow quite well, quite easily with very little interference from human beings. Uh, they, they don't want to be pruned too heavily. In fact, probably don't need to be pruned much at all for the first several years because they don't produce much branching and they don't grow uh, a whole lot of lateral branches. And they don't grow very quickly. They do not like food. So superphosphate applied once in the dormant season is probably fine. Uh, most people have found that uh, feeding the persimmon with regular fruit tree or with a nitrogen-based uh, fertilizer uh, has adverse effects on it. Uh, the other thing to know about persimmon is they're one of the last trees to come out of dormancy. One of the last trees to produce leaves. So don't, uh, don't begin the watering of the tree until you see some leaves coming out. Uh, persimmons are easily damaged by excessive moisture during the dormant season. 
Next. Figs. So figs can be pruned now. And there are some varieties of figs that produce twice a year. Uh, the brown turkey fig is an example of that. Uh, they will produce figs twice. And it's important not to prune them too heavily if you want to get that late fruiting. Prune them now at this time of year. Uh, control the size of the tree with heavy pruning. In other words, take the central leader out, thin back any real strong branches, and then leave the rest of the tree alone. Don't cut every single branch. Don't thin every single twig. Uh, let them fruit. And uh, keep in mind that, that uh, heavy pruning of all the branches uh, and you won't get any fruit at all. Okay, next. Okay, a pomegranate, that's say a very easy plant to grow. Loves the sun, loves the heat, needs very little food, very little watering. Uh, can be pruned. Yes, thank you. This time of year uh, to control the height, typically with a pomegranate, what I like to do is thin out any new canes that are coming up from the bottom of the plant. If you prune the plant too heavily, you won't get fruit for a couple of years. So I don't touch the top of the tree too much, the top of the pomegranate bush too much. I just thin it out, take out the stuff at the bottom, take out any crossing branches. Next. Now, cherries, once again, we don't grow cherries here in Santa Clarita, but uh, perhaps up in uh, Acton, Leona Valley, uh, further up the five, past Gorman, colder areas, they can produce cherries. And they're pruned at this time of year, and they produce in the same spots for year after year. So if you remove a branch on a cherry tree, uh, you will remove any fruiting possibility in that area. If you're going to prune a cherry tree, prune it hard the first year and later every year thereafter, because they will produce fruit in the same spot for many, many years. But next, the flowering peach, we already talked about that. The best time to prune it is immediately after flowering, and it can be cut back pretty strongly, uh, much stronger than the fruiting type of peach. And it is recommended uh, to prune it rather hard uh, so that it has then almost a full year to develop the new fruiting and flowering, I'm sorry, flowering buds. Next. Apricots, they produce on uh, second year and older wood but they grow very vigorously in the middle. So it's best to thin out the center of your tree uh, by removing, once again, the central leader and any other very thick, vigorous branches towards the center of the tree. Uh, so we want to open it up. We want sunlight to enter and wind. And, uh, you know, uh, pruning that hard will also uh, make it easier to pick that fruit uh, when the time comes. So uh, apricots can be pruned rather hard, uh, especially to get out the center of the tree. Next, the plum, we talked a little bit about that, that we don't prune it like a peach. We take out the whips and the things like that. And uh, we take out the strong central leaders. And then, uh, after that, it's simply the outside of the tree that we'll work on once we have the inside uh, cleaned up. You may not have to prune too much uh, years three, four, and five. If you do it really well, years one and two. Next. So there's a, those are some good pictures there. The, the one on the left there shows you just how much of the rose is taken out and how much is left. And on this particular rose, you can see that they've left five main branches on there. And that's sufficient. That's fantastic. 
And then if we go over to the uh, right side of the screen, we'll see how deciduous shade trees uh, should be pruned. If you want to prune it heavily, it would look like the one on the right. Okay, you always have to leave your, your, your central main branches intact. Okay, the three on the bottom are things that you won't be involved with too much. We don't grow much in the way of cornice or salix here, but uh, some people do grow grasses and the grasses can be pruned either to just above the ground or near ground level and they will come back again uh, right away. And then shearing uh, like the boxwoods and ligustrum can be done almost any time except the heat of summer. Uh, pruning or shearing like that with your formal hedges in the heat of summer, uh, you can get sun burning on the plants. Next. Okay, and so these are some of the tools that you'll use. The one on the upper left, the bypass pruner, that is the handheld pruner that you'll use for roses and smaller twigs. Uh, the one in the middle, the anvil type, that's used for cutting out dead wood or dead canes on your roses. The head shears, once again, for hedging, then you can use an extension pruner or a lopper uh, for making all the other cuts on your roses and fruit trees, with the exception of a, uh, a larger branch, at which time you'd wanna use a pruning saw. And remember, use your undercut first and then your two overcuts. Next. And then here's just a little review of some things that we've talked about, the apical dominance. This is the tips of our plant. And if we cut near the tips, it will bush out at that point. And some plants we don't want that to happen to, like pine trees and look at amber. Some plants we do want to become bushy and by pruning the outer tips, it will become bushy. And we uh, spoke briefly about bonsai. Uh, deadheading, and that's done during the growing season, uh, especially on your roses. Really any flowering plant, it's a good idea to go out there and prune off the dead flowers to encourage new blooms. But with the roses, uh, it's a very good idea. And it actually helps to keep the plant uh, in check. And uh, you can actually uh, prune the rose, the old rose flower off with a sizable length of stem. And from that point, you will get another new stem with another nice flower on it. So the dormant sprays are mineral oil based or petroleum based, and they smother the eggs that may be left over on it. And by mixing the dormant spray, the dormant oil with a copper spray, you'll also take care of any uh, disease problems that may be overwintering on the plants. Okay, next. Spallying. And uh, sometimes you can buy a plant already on a trellis and put it up against a wall. And uh, I know that certain things like the evergreen pear and some fruiting pears and fruiting apples can be espalied. Hedging, we don't hedge fruit trees. Uh, pollarding, that is a uh, type of pruning that uh, is very uh, detrimental to the health of trees and isn't done anymore. And shoots are last, last year's wood. Uh, so keep in mind that we can't remove all of last year's wood off of a plant or we won't get any new growth years to come. There were a few trees like plums that, and cherries, I believe, that will produce in the same location year after year. So it is important to retain that wood. Next, spurs. These are things we want to 
look for on a tree. Uh, if your tree produces too much fruit, uh, then certainly uh, removing some spurs uh, will help to eliminate that. Uh, and that's true with your cherries and your plums. The uh, topiary, we've discussed that. If you really like topiaries, uh, you should visit uh, Disneyland. They have lots of them there. And next. Very good, we end with a little humor. Now, with, uh, with any luck, we're gonna have a little video, and if the audio works, that's great, but if it doesn't, I will try to uh, narrate it for you. It's a short video uh, showing the pruning of a shrub-type rose, which is a very vigorous rose that uh, produces this, well, just to give you an idea, this particular rose that you're looking at right now was cut back severely last winter by students at the pruning class at the water district. And it has grown again this full in one growing season. And then keep in mind, after this uh, video, uh, we're going to have a little uh, Q&A. So I'm certain there's some things that I did not uh, touch upon properly. And uh, you, if you want to ask questions about those things, uh, do so uh, at the end here. Okay, I think Laura is gonna start the video. And if there is audio, that's great. But if there's not, uh, I will help you out with that. Okay, Laura, go. Right, good morning, folks. We're going to do a little video on the pruning roses, and we're going to start with this clump right here. I believe there's actually three roses just planted very closely here, and these are shrub roses, but we're going to prune all roses the same, whether they're hybrid teas, grandiflorans, or shrub roses. So this is how the plant looks. This same plant was pruned last winter at this time. And you can see it's really rebounded. It looks quite nice. Now what we're gonna need to do this are some long gloves because these plants have thorns all up and down. Them. So I would suggest at least uh, oh, elbow length gloves uh, to prune. And then we'll only need two simple tools, a lopper and a regular hand pruner. And the hand pruner will take care of most of the twigs, most of the small branches, for instance, like this, that we won't need. The lopper will be for any of the canes or larger branches, like this. Okay, so now we'll begin, and the best way to attack a, uh, an overgrown rose like this is directly in the middle. We want to aim for the center of our plant and clean out all the debris so that we can locate the basic canes. Typically, We'd like four or five canes uh, to work with. And if I look closely inside of here, I can see a couple of very large ones, very nice ones, and I can see at least four. So what I'll do first is take off a lot of these little twigs so that we can see inside there a lot easier. Now maybe you can see that with the removal of those few branches, few twigs right down there, you can finally see the inside of our plant. And I'll simply point to the main canes. You can see there's one right here, 
There's one right here, and there's one right there. So three very large, mature canes. And perhaps a fourth one right here. So those are the four that we'll keep, and we'll remove all the rest of the shoots that are coming up, and then we'll work, after we take out all the shoots, we'll work on those four canes, uh, because they will produce all of the flowers for next season. So I'm just going to go in here and take out the canes that we won't need. Okay, so this side looks pretty good. And we have to move around our plant uh, pretty much constantly. So I'm going to move to the back side now and take a look down here. And from back here, we can see a lot of small shoots that uh, we don't need and don't want. So we're going to take out the small ones again. Now this side looks pretty good, and I'm going to move around again, and come around the back side, and take off a few of the canes that are unnecessary from this side. of the plant and the canes that were growing towards the middle of the plant, we can now take our pruners and do some of the final pruning, which is to remove any unnecessary small twigs. Now, we're not going to take everything off the plant, obviously, because the plant needs to recuperate, sleep for a little while, and then come back and grow on whatever we leave left on the plant. So we will leave probably one out of four of these little twigs to allow the plant to grow on this season. And that is one of the reasons why we prune the plant. We, we have to put them to sleep. Plants, like people, need to have sleep. And in Southern California, where the weather can be like this in the middle of December, we're probably looking at a uh, 75 degree sunny day. Well, obviously the plant doesn't want to go to sleep if the weather is that nice. And if it doesn't go to sleep, it's not going to be healthy next year. So by pruning it, by removing all of the excess twigs and branches, feeding on roses should come in October, and we won't feed them again until mid to late March, and that will give the plant several months to sleep and recuperate, and when it comes back in the spring, it should look beautiful. So you'll notice I'm only now 
trimming the top of the plant. The important things were to get the middle of the plant cleaned out, get rid of the little twigs, and now, and only now, will we take care of the top of the plant. And we'll get rid of any excess growth near the top. And we'll cut it back to where there's a bud facing out. Now that's a uh, that's an important step right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm hopefully going to show you a bud. A bud will be a little scar, like right there. You can see it right there. If we cut just above there, the growth will come out at that point. Here's a larger branch and hopefully I can show you some good buds on it. The buds are usually hidden at wherever a leaf was, a leaf scar. So you can see there's a bud right there. And if I remove this leaf, you'll see there's a scar right there. That's where a bud would come out. So if I wanted the growth to go this way, I would cut just above that bud. And now what comes out next year will grow that way. And we want to form our plant to grow in a vase shape out away from the center of the plant. And that's one reason we take out all these little twigs that are, in fact, in the middle of our plant. The ones that we leave, we will face out away from the plant. And so now you can see the center of our plant. And We'll take a few more of these twigs out that are in the center of our plant. But this is what we want. We want it open. We want to be able to see down into the center of our plant and take off any debris that might prevent that. Now, this is also the same time of year that you would be pruning your deciduous fruit trees. Peaches, plums, nectarines, etc. And when you prune them, one basic thing you'll do that we're doing here is open up the center. You have to be able to look down into the middle of our plant. And by doing so, the sunlight can get in there, and air can get in there, and we need good air circulation to have healthy roses. So you can see the pile of debris that we've taken off of the rows, and you can see it's substantial. And now, if you take a look at what's left on the rows and try to compare that to what we started with, you'll see that we have probably removed close to 75% of the material that was on the rows when we started. And now, you're going to look straight down on top of the plant and you're going to see how open it is on the top. And this is the look that we're looking for. We want our branches to be spread out to the north, south, east, and west and have as little as possible coming up through the middle of our plant. So uh, hopefully next year when we prune these, we can do this in person and you'll be able to see just how this plant has in fact recuperated from this severe pruning and how nice it will come out in all of the following years from here on out. So once again, think of the plant before and now, and this is how your roses should look. I know that some people are going to ask, is there a particular height that you cut your roses down to? And your plant will actually determine that, where you make your cuts, where the outside facing buds are. And quite often, you'll find out that it is almost all within the same range. I would say on this plant, we are probably anywhere between 24 inches and 30 inches maximum on any particular thing. So anyway, uh, if you have any questions, at the end of class, go ahead and type them in. And I'll
Great, thank you, John. Um, John, your camera is off. My We're, camera's off? Your camera is off. We're gonna hop into the, um, the Q&A. Okay. okay. Should I hit the uh, start video button or? Uh... Yeah. Okay. So anything happens? Nothing happens, come on. Okay, there we go. Okay, so somebody asked, will the PDF slides be made available after the class? You can actually email me um, and I'll put my email in the chat box and I will email everybody a copy um, who asked for it. Uh, somebody asked, John, what does it mean height of dormancy? Uh, the peak of dormancy. In other words, I, I mentioned in there that uh, our winter times are rather uh, short. Uh, December 21st through February 21st. So the peak would be the middle of that. And that's that was yesterday. <laughs> so hopefully you're all out pruning uh, yesterday. But right now, yes, you've got, a, you've got another month. But uh, the peak of dormancy is the, the middle or center, the best time. OK, so and then they ask, how many times do we need to apply the dormant spray? Well. Some years only once. If we get a heavy rain, the heavy rains will wash it off and you can apply it again. And you can apply it even as the new growth is coming out. Uh, you probably want to stop once there's uh, flowers on the plant. But as a rule, if we don't get a heavy rain, the dormant spray uh, will stay on there. I know last year you only had to spray once because we didn't get any rain. Uh, this year, uh, if you're spraying today, uh, repeat it after uh, a heavy downfall. Okay, and then somebody asked, when is it the best time to prune avocado trees? Avocado trees need very little, if any, pruning. Uh, once again, they can be sunburned severely if they're pruned too hard. Uh, allow the uh, avocado tree to grow straight to the ground, all the way to the ground, uh, to protect the sun uh, from hitting the trunk of the trees. Uh, remember, they're evergreen, and by being evergreen, they're not used to having sun hitting their uh, trunk or their main branches. So pruning will uh, sometimes get in the way of that. If you get a shoot that is growing up too tall, cut that shoot back by about a third. But don't get too heavily involved in pruning your avocados. Somebody said, what about pruning climbing roses? Yeah, uh, it's a whole other thing. You cannot uh, prune a climbing rose like you do a normal rose. On a climbing rose, all you can do is prune at the tips and anything that is coming out. Prune anywhere it has flowered in the past, but you can't cut down to the main canes on a uh, climbing rose. They have to be treated completely differently, but they can be treated, they can be done now. So just remove any place where they've produced old flowers and any branches coming out away from the wall or the trellis or wherever they are. Okay, next question. We have some old rose bushes that don't look anything like your examples. How much should I prune at one time without hurting them? 100% remove them. In other words, old roses, once they stop producing uh, new fresh canes, uh, truthfully, uh, just remove them and plant new young roses. Uh, they say roses produce best from their third through their seventh year. So if you have a rose that's more than 10 years old, uh, it, it's not gonna produce like it did when it was younger. And by the time they get to about 15, they're usually too woody at the base and don't produce well. Uh, so no, there's no magic formula for that. Uh, truthfully, if you, Take out an old rose, you can recondition the soil, add some minerals and things, and then plant a new young rose that you can enjoy for many more years. Okay. Okay, and how about should non-fruit bearing plums be pruned after flowering? Non-fruit bearing plums, I, produce, I presume 
that means the uh, uh, ornamental plums, like the purple leaf plums. Uh, they can be pruned right now. They can be pruned now. They, they, we would just consider them to be a deciduous tree, uh, like any other shade type tree in the yard. Okay. Okay. Any tips on pruning California pepper trees? <sighs> They can be pruned as vigorously as you want. Uh, I'm not gonna make any friends here, but I, I'm, I'm not a fan of the uh, California pepper tree. They are not a California native. They come from South America and they have invaded Southern California. They are actually starting to sprout and come up in native areas and uh, push out native plants. I believe they're on the UC Davis noxious tree list, meaning they shouldn't be planted in California anymore. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say about peppers. Okay, do pomegranates and jujube berries need pruning? Uh, just lightly, just lightly. I had a few uh, uh, jujube plants and uh, they, uh, they were fun. Uh, and I didn't have to prune them much except uh, to keep them, keep the size down. What was the other plant? The first plant? Um, sorry, I started going to the questions. Oh, well, just go on to the next one. Sorry. Oh, it was berry, uh, pomegranate. Oh, pomegranate. Yeah, we talked about pomegranate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next question is. Can you discuss how to prune some antique roses, if at all, since they flower on old wood? Well, um, just cut off the, uh, just deadhead them. Cut off the dead flowers and take out any little twigs. Uh, like the David Austin roses, that's how you uh, prune them. Uh, take out any young twigs and prune out any place where, where um, the old flowers were. Okay, and where on old, where on the roses do you apply the dormant spray? Oh, you spray the whole thing. I mean, the, the, all, all that's going to be left are the canes. Uh, so saturate it, saturate it. You can't overdo it. You, you mix it up accordingly to the directions. Uh, you can add the copper and the oil together and then uh, thoroughly, thoroughly spray your plants. Okay, next question is, do I need to prune my cherry tomatoes and regular tomatoes also taking a while to turn red? No, they should be pulled out. They should have been pulled out uh, several months ago. Uh, uh, tomatoes are an annual plant. They're only supposed to be in the ground from uh, April through about October. Uh, then they have to be taken out. Uh, don't try to overwinter your plants. It's very bad for them. They're, you can get diseases and it's really bad for the soil. So no, of course, they need little fruits left on there aren't ripening. It's, it's the middle of winter, not summer. Uh, tear them out. If you want to plant something now, plant uh, spinach and lettuce and things like that. Your tomatoes should have been removed long ago. So uh, as soon as this presentation's over, go outside and take them out. Next. Thank you. Okay. Um, my orange tree is full of thorns. What can I do to decrease the thorn growth? The thorns are mainly on one side and very few oranges grow. That's because it's sucker growth. If you look down at the base of your plant, you'll find that the branch that has all the thorns on it is coming off from the ground. It's sucker growth. It's not your orange at all. You need to take a pruning saw and go out there and cut off that whole main branch that is coming up out of the ground that has the thorns on it. It's a sucker growth and it will actually kill off your, uh, your producing orange. So go out there once again, right after this class with your pruning saw and remove it. Okay, next question is, what is the best way to prune dwarf, lanta, bush, and salvia? Okay, I wonder if they meant lantana. Lanta. Oh yes, lantana. Okay, so a uh, lantana, uh, you don't prune it at all this time of year. Uh, salvia, some of the salvias you prune down in the fall. Uh, lantana, you can uh, trim it back uh, lightly uh, as soon as the uh, spring comes. Remember, lantana was one of those plants that is frost sensitive, and we don't prune it in the winter. 
Um, somebody said, we removed an invasive poplar tree in our front yard. We want to plant another tree that doesn't have invasive roots. What do you think about either a golden trumpet or a blue Palo Verde tree? Either Will either grow well in SUV? If so, any pruning tips? Our front yard is now empty of grass and trees. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, Palo Verde, the Desert Museum, Desert Museum variety Palo Verde uh, is an excellent choice. Uh, and by the way, the cottonwood or poplar that they took off, that is a weed tree, much like the peppers. So it's a good that they eliminated it. They need to keep their eyes open for sprouts, uh, shoots that may come up from the ground near where that tree was planted. Okay, next. Okay, the next question is, um, our, our bougain, bougain villas get hit hard with frost every year, yes. but, but come back beautifully. What do we do to encourage it? Uh, prune, don't prune off the dead stuff yet. Prune off anything that get hit, that gets frost damage. Prune it off in uh, late March. Uh, the bougainvilleas love a hot, sunny, dry location, and they don't need much fertilizer. So if you're going to feed them, feed them once, once in late spring. Uh, water them after you feed them, but then go very light on the frequency of watering. And uh, as far as pruning, uh, they do grow very vigorously, so you may have to prune them to keep them from coming out in walkways, etc. And uh, that can be done in late March. Okay, next. Do I prune my rows of Sharon like you just demonstrated for rose bushes? No, I, I hardly prune, prune my uh, rose of Sharon at all. It needs very little pruning. If you uh, need to keep it in shape or something, uh, you can prune it now. But uh, it's not a rose, of course. It is actually a uh, type of hibiscus, a hardy hibiscus uh, that comes from uh, the Middle East. Uh, so prune it if you need to, but uh, I've had mine for uh, nine years now. And the only pruning I've done is when it's grown out into the walkway. Okay. Okay, somebody said, do I need to prune roses in a, that are in a pot? Yes. Okay, when is the best time to prune hydra hydrangeas? Although I think I killed mine. Yes, well, uh, pruning at the wrong time of year or pruning too hard on a hydrangea uh, can, can be rough on them. Uh, typically, if you have any doubts, then prune immediately after the flowering. When you've got the old dead flower on there, go ahead and cut it back pretty thoroughly then. That's the safest time. Because uh, sometimes hydrangeas need, need a while to form the wood to produce the new flowers on. So by pruning, after they're done blooming, uh, you'll be safe, okay? Okay, fruit, tree, um, fruit trees shouldn't be watered during dormancy, right? If we have a real long dry spell, like if we go more than a month without watering, without rain, um, then it wouldn't hurt. But as a rule, uh, no, I know my, my soil is so saturated from the, the rains that we've had. So um, I don't believe I've watered. Well, didn't water. I, so it's been probably two months since I've watered mine, uh, but we've had a couple of good rains. So if we go a month without rain, then go ahead and water them. And then once they've leafed out, you can begin your regular watering program, which should never be more than once a week. Okay, go ahead. Okay, somebody said, how about uh, pygmy palm, bovine, bird of paradise, when to prune, and jasmine? Well, pygmy palm, you don't prune at all. You just cut off the old stuff. Uh, vines, as needed, whenever needed. And what was the other plant? Bird, uh, bird of bird paradise. Bird of paradise. So I don't know what you'd prune on there, except maybe the old flowers. Cut the old flowers off anytime you want and cut them down as low as you can. If there's dead leaves towards the outside of the plant, cut them off once again at any time at all. And, and what about jasmine? 
as needed, okay. as needed. There, there's no, really no time. I, I would not do it when it's hot though. I wouldn't prune after June. I wouldn't prune from June through October uh, because uh, that's the heat of summer and probably not the best time to prune those things. Okay, so how should lavender be pruned? Oh, lavender should be pruned uh, about one third, cut it back about one third. Don't cut into the wood, but cut into the green foliage about one third. You can actually do it several times a year uh, because lavender grows very vigorously and very bushy. And once it gets too big and produces too much wood, uh, then you can't really cut it back very well. So it's good to cut it back several times a year while it's young. It doesn't really matter when. Uh, the things always seem to be producing flowers. So just be prepared to have to take a few flowers off when you're pruning it. Okay. okay. Uh, how about the dwarf Satsuma mandarin orange tree that is planted in the ground? How do you prune that one? Once again, it's a citrus tree and prune it only if you need to. There has to be a good reason to. There has to be a reason to prune it because left to its own devices, it doesn't need pruning. So if there's a really good reason, if there's a branch that's going six feet out away from the parent plant, then you cut that branch. But you don't prune citrus like you do regular fruit trees. You don't prune them every year and you only prune them if need be, okay? Okay, how about the black jack fig tree planted in a one half oak barrel? Well, the fig trees themselves, normal fig trees are uh, vigorous and need to be pruned heavily. A blackjack is a dwarf fig tree. So uh, it's obviously going to be produced very lightly. Uh, if it's growing vigorously, well, that's great. Cut it back a little bit. But uh, my experience with the blackjack is it was a pretty slow grower, and I didn't have to prune it very much, uh, maybe just to, to uh, keep the height down a little bit on it. Okay, next. Okay, uh, how about two volunteer fig trees that grew in my yard, probably brought in by birds planted in pots? Yeah, well, if you want to keep them, keep them. Uh, but yes, figs come up all over. I, I have seen yards with dozens of fig trees sprouting up uh, from birds or squirrels dropping them. And they're usually coming up in locations where you don't want them. Figs are very vigorous trees, very big trees, uh, big root systems. They need a lot of space. Uh, you got to think twice before planting one. You really got to have the room. And if they're just starting to sprout up in your yard or in pots, really decide if you want to keep them because pruning won't stop the roots from growing. Remember, uh, several times during this presentation, we've mentioned that pruning encourages growth. So you can't keep a regular fig tree small uh, or in a pot for very long. And uh, sometimes the Figs that are dropped by the animals don't produce fruit, or if they do produce fruit, it takes several years. So first thing you have to do is decide, do you really want to keep these trees? Are they okay where they are? And if so, you can prune them to keep them to the shape you want. And it would be done now, okay? Okay, how about a peach tree grown from a peach pit planted in a pot? Same thing. Prune it like we discussed with the uh, peach trees. Okay. For apple trees, when pruning, I've heard not to cut any part of the branch where fruit has budded before. Do I just leave those branches alone or do you still cut off a third even if there's fruit buds on it? Well, with the apple trees, the uh, I think we discussed that you take out the center of the tree and take out any unneeded uh, excess twigs. Yes, they produce in the same place year after year. Uh, so typically it's not out near the ends of the tree though. Apples typically don't produce clear out near the tips. Most of it is along the branches. So uh, cutting the tips is probably not gonna reduce too much fruiting. Uh, but you do have to prune that apple or, or they can be very vigorous. I've seen apples that were left alone for too long and uh, didn't get pruned either for a year or two, and suddenly they were way out of bounds and had to have some very vigorous pruning done. But uh, yeah, don't be afraid to prune your uh, your apple tree. 
most of the fruiting, most of the spurs should be towards the center of the tree and along the main branches. Okay. Okay, we have a few more questions. Um, my dwarf nectarine flowers heavily, but only set three to four fruits that never get bigger than two inches in diameter. What can I do to encourage more fruits to set? Well, uh, I'd have to know a couple things about the tree. First off, is it a dwarf or a regular one? Is it growing out in a sunny area? Sun is the most important factor. We can't do anything to make up for sun. They need sunlight. Secondly, uh, we've discussed a little bit the watering of these trees. Overwatering a fruit tree uh, will not help the tree out at all. You'll get reduced fruiting with uh, excessive watering. So if your tree is planted in the middle of the lawn, I never expect it to do well. If it's planted by itself in a nice sunny area, and you water it once a week, and you prune it properly, uh, things should be fine. The other thing to, uh, to, to look at on your tree is whether there's a lot of debris underneath it. Uh, some people will go out with a light rake or a broom and sweep everything from the trunk away. It's okay if your roots are slightly exposed uh, near the surface. This will actually help them to breathe. Uh, the other thing is, if your uh, tree is mature, if it's more than three years old, the number of fruit produced will almost double each year. So if you got three pieces of fruit next year, you could expect to get six to nine the following year and 18 to 24 the following year. They produce more and more every year as they produce more wood uh, that is uh, viable for fruit production. Okay. Okay, next question is, I have a three to four year old chocolate mimosa tree that I thought was supposed to be fast growing. It seems like it has barely grown. How should I prune this? Well, first off, what I just suggested to the last person about going out and looking at how the tree's planted. If the tree's planted even an inch too deep, it simply won't grow well. Uh, if the tree's watered too frequently, and by frequently, I would never water a mimosa more than once a week during the heat of summer and once every two weeks beyond that. Remove any debris underneath it. Make sure you can see the surface roots. Uh, if you want to stimulate growth, hit it with some fertilizer near the end of March. Um, I don't think I'd prune it. I don't think I'd prune it. I would make sure it's not being watered too frequently. I'd make sure it's not planted too deeply. And then I would fertilize it at the end of March. That should stimulate it. Okay, next question. Also the water sprouts, are those any branches that grow skyward? Yes, they grow straight up off of a main lateral branch. In other words, we've already discussed having four or five main branches that go out from our trunk. Water sprouts are branches that grow straight up from there. It happens a lot on apricots. It happens on plums. It happens on Eureka lemon trees. Those water sprouts will grow anywhere from three to six feet in a year and grow straight up through the center of the tree. Uh, they should be removed at this time of year and they can be cut back all the way to the parent branch or parent stem. A follow-up question to the tomato one. Um, what do I do with the tomatoes? Do I keep them indoors for now until spring or summer? Um, no, no, you throw them away. You throw them in the compost pile. You throw them away. They're a temporary plant. They're like a petunia or a pansy. They're a temporary plant. They're not meant to overwinter and bad things will happen. Throw them in your compost pile. Dig them up, throw them away. Recondition your soil. Maybe plant some lettuce now, or some spinach, uh, or some peas. Okay. okay, how do you prune grapes? I, I don't think I could uh, explain it uh, like this in a video. Uh, Grapes need to be pruned at this time of year. And it's best to get a, uh, a uh, video on it or uh, perhaps get some pictures on how to do it. Uh, I, would have very, I would have great difficulty explaining in words how to prune a grape vine. 
So it's probably best that I, I don't attempt it. I wouldn't want you to prune incorrectly, uh, but uh, perhaps there's some good literature out there or some good pruning books uh, that, that you could uh, use as a resource. Okay. okay. Um, I hope I don't butcher this one, but how, how should cyanotus be pruned? If so, how much? Oh, so you know this, uh, why prune it at all? But, um, oh, okay. So you know this, our native plants that uh, grow quite well and uh, jeepers. I don't know if you, uh, I don't know if you, if, if you need to prune them. Most native plants, believe it or not, go dormant in uh, late summer. Uh, and I suppose if you had to prune it, that's uh, when you might want to do it. Okay. Okay. When can you prune a honeysuckle vine and what is the best fertilizer for it? Oh, well, honeysuckles can be pruned whenever you'd like. Uh, I would suppose I'd wait till after winter was finished. Uh, use any uh, all purpose fertilizer like a 10 10 10. Uh, that works for anything. Uh, that would also be a good, a 10 10 10 would be excellent for fruit trees, for citrus trees for pomegranates, for figs, for roses, for most plants we've talked about. And that can be applied at the end of March. Can we apply dormant spray after we remove browning or dead leaves like hibiscus, pygmy palm, or other tropical plants? They don't need the sprays. Uh, pygmy palms don't need to be sprayed. Your hibiscus shouldn't need to be sprayed at this time of year. Uh, keep an eye on the hibiscus during the growing season for insects. And then you could spray uh, with an insecticide to control the insects on your hibiscus. Okay, somebody said, I've had four dwarf citrus plants in full sun. These tend to be predominantly yellow and fruit never comes to fruition. Okay, yellowing is always caused by excessive water. Uh, yellowing is, is something that can be controlled by watching your watering. During the heat of summer, when we get to be like 100 degrees, then you can water once a week. At this time of year, I'd probably be watering monthly. In the spring, I might go to once every two weeks. And in the fall, probably once every two weeks. Uh, keep in mind, they don't like to be buried too deeply. So if you can't see the roots at the surface, go out there with a the broom, sweep away the soil until you can see the roots. Uh, once springtime gets here, you can feed them with a uh, fertilizer that'll have minerals in it. Now. Uh, this might sound a little strange to some people, but don't use organic fertilizers. They don't have minerals in them. Get yourself a nice mineral blend. They need iron. Iron is a mineral, so it's not organic. Organic means something was living at one time, like a, a leaf or a tree or an animal. Minerals are rocks. They came from the earth. Plants need minerals in order to grow. Yellowing uh, can be a sign of lack of minerals like iron and zinc. So when you go to fertilize your tree, make sure you're using a fertilizer that contains lots of minerals, iron and zinc, and manganese and things like that. Okay. Okay, how do you, oh, how to prune a crepe myrtle tree? Oh, crepe myrtle tree. Well, once again, they bloom um, on, on the, uh, old wood. So if you prune them right after, immediately after they bloomed, that's fantastic. As soon as those flowers finish, if you prune it, and you can prune it as hard as you want or as light as you want, but that's really the best time to prune it. Uh, if you do it in the winter, if you do it right now, the only place I would prune is where you could see the old flowers were. There might be some dead twigs. There might still be some of those little seed pods hanging on it. You can prune them off. But uh, keep in mind, if you really wanted to be uh, uh, a really conscientious gardener, you would prune a crepe myrtle, a lilac, and a hydrangea immediately after they bloom. Okay. okay. And then do I need to prune a kumquat or other, other than remove water sprouts? Oh, that's it. Just remove water sprouts and keep your eye out for suckers. Suckers are things that come out very low on the trunk or from the ground. Okay. Somebody said, I thought you weren't supposed to put tomato trimmings into the compost pit. Well, that's odd. Of course you are. 
the only plant material that can't go into your compost pile uh, is uh, citrus peel. You can't put orange peels or grapefruit peels into your compost pile. And certainly don't use rose clippings, but uh, all vegetable material absolutely can and should go into your compost pile. Okay, somebody said, how do I recondition the soil? Oh, uh, by adding a nice mineral blend. Uh, there's several mineral blends, or you can buy lots of different products that contain minerals. There's, there's a bunch of them. Uh, there's one that's real popular. It's called azomite, and it's made from uh, volcanic rock. Azomite's great. There's bagged materials. Um, EB Stone makes a whole line of really good organic materials. One is called Soil Booster. It's got a lot of really good things for the, for the plants. So basically, the more you add to the soil, especially if you're talking about any place you've had roses planted, because they really do destroy the soil, uh, as do the tomato plants, by the way. So uh, yeah, any minerals you can add will, will be helpful for the following year. Okay, and then uh, my basil looks like they died, but not sure if they're just dormant. Could it be the frost? Yes, yes, they're frost sensitive. They can be thrown away now. Replant them again in late spring. Once again, basil's just a temporary plant. It's an annual plant. It has a very short season. Uh, they don't like cold weather. So you can begin planting them at the end of March uh, and then use the plant up and then plant new ones throughout the year. But don't plant anything after oh boy, the beginning of October, uh, because they, they, they are subject to uh, uh, frost damage. Uh, they aren't supposed to be a year-round plant. They're just an annual plant, very short lifespan. Throw the plant away, throw it into the compost pile. Okay, somebody said, what does it mean when parsley leaves have yellow spots? Typically, uh, might not mean anything. Uh, if there's a lot of them, it could be excessive moisture. Uh, yeah, so just to watch your water and don't keep them too wet. Uh, parsley, now once again, you, you can always just tear the old parsley out and plant some new stuff in the spring if you'd like. That'll get you some fresh new plants. Uh, but this time of year, if it's happening, I would say it's because the soil's so wet. Uh, like, like I've already mentioned, my soil is still socking wet. Uh, and I haven't watered in two months, okay? Okay, uh, if the tree has lots of suckers coming from the ground, does that indicate any errors in how we're caring for the tree? It could mean the tree was planted too deeply, yes. Uh, typically, that's exactly what it means. And the best thing to do is to remove all the soil off the top of the plant until you can see the roots, and then cut all the suckers off as far down as you possibly can. If you simply cut a sucker off at ground level, it'll just re-sprout. So if you can cut it down to where it's coming from, you'll do a lot better. Hey, yeah, someone said, can I add ashes from my fireplace to my garden? No. And I hope that I said that firmly enough. It is quite bad for the soil. It'll make the soil more alkaline. Back east where they have acidic soil, they can do it. Out here we have alkaline soil and the ash from a fireplace increases the alkalinity. I don't think you even want to throw it in your compost pile. Okay, so several people to thank you so much for explaining this to us. Uh, somebody asked if you'll be teaching more classes um, and that they appreciate all the information. So there's no more questions, John. That is it for today. Thank you so much. I okay, just want to remind thank you folks. And yes, uh, with any luck, I will, uh, I'll be back next month for a brand new program. Yeah, and next month our class will be on Saturday, February 5th, and it'll be the basics of sustainable landscaping. So if you wanna join us for that, please register um, on scbwater.com backslash gardening class. Okay, so thank you everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, and thank you for your questions and for staying tuned and for your patience getting started. Have a great day. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.